Welcome to the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. I'm your host, Simone Morris, and I have a passion for empowering others to take responsibility for their careers. Yes, I've written several books on owning your career and am loving hosting this podcast. This podcast is for you if you're willing to make a shift to the driver's seat in your career. We feature leaders who inspire, empower, and motivate you for consistent career action for results. Please continue to join us every Sunday when a new episode is released. Let's get into this week's show. Hello, 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 everyone. Uh, In this week's bonus episode of the Power of Owning Your Career podcast, as we kick off Women's History Month, I've got some exciting news. We've got a new book coming out with the fabulous Bridget McGowan Hawkins. And uh, I think you guys know she's my bestie and we're collaborating on this wonderful project together and just so excited about bringing 20 or so women on this journey and sharing their their stories with the world. Just uh, Bridget, welcome back to the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. Thank you, Simone. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, You know, I'm over the moon about this project, partially because I'm doing it with you, Uh Uh, but (laughs) more so because of the voices that are included in this book and how it's just going to help help so many ladies. Yeah, I love the idea of honing in on leadership stories. I feel it's somewhat akin to what's happening on the podcast because each week I bring leaders who share their journey, their stories to the driver's seat. And so as we think about this book and the, the uh, content of this book, anything pop to mind when you think about the driver's seat, any story that just jump out at you that you want to mention, even if it's your own. Right. Well, you know, every last one of these ladies in this book, now that I sit here and think about it, Simone decided that they would put themselves in the driver's seat as opposed to letting somebody else drive their car. Seriously, as I think about all of the chapters and each chapter in the book is written by a lady who is a leader in her industry, either at a company Uh, as an employee or at her own company, as an owner, as a VP or something to that effect, every last one of them decided that they would put both hands on the wheel (laughs) and and go all gas, no brakes. Uh, I'm trying to think, man, so many of them are, uh, are, are incredible. Heidi Solomon Orlick's chapter stands out for sure. Her chapter is entitled, Fail Fast and Take More Risks. So when you're in the driver's seat, it can be scary. It can be risky. Even when you are, I mean, as drivers on the road, you know, well, depending on where you live, it can be scarier than other places <laughs> and ris- riskier than other places. But she talks about how you should have just sit back and stay comfortable. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, as women, we oftentimes will second guess ourselves. If someone offers us an opportunity, we are usually a little hesitant if we don't know everything about that opportunity. We're a little scared. She even tells a story about running into an old acquaintance and he, they get to talking and, he presents an opportunity to her. And she said, oh, I I just, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. And he was like, heck, none of us know anything about it at the company. We're essentially building the plane while we're flying it. And that's what made her go into saying, women need to get in that driver's seat and just grip the steering wheel and say, I don't know, but gosh darn it, I'm not going to let on that I don't know. I am going to figure it out and be a success at it. So the book has so many incredible, incredible accounts of women who have just said that they're not going to be passive in their careers anymore, that they are going to step up 
step out and make it happen. I love that. I love that, Bridget. And it, 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 listeners know that Heidi is going to be a guest on the podcast, so you'll hear more of her story. Her episode is going to be dropping soon as well. What's coming up for me, Bridget, is as I think about the collaboration that we did together, one of the things that I like to say when it comes to careers is that you need to have the right team and you need to have partners on the journey. So as our listeners begin to think about collaborating for career success, what are some of the things that come up for you that in terms of advice for collaborating with others to have a su successful collaboration? Because we have, this is a, a second try for a collaboration with us. And this one has worked really, really well. And so I think, you know, as you think about your careers, listeners, think about people who you can get on your team and how you can collaborate with them. So Bridget, in this collaboration between the two of us, what would you say um, was the secret sauce? Ooh, communication for sure. Uh, making sure that we both understood what we wanted to get out of this project and what we wanted others to get out of the project. We had to step back and say, what is our why behind this? Why are we even doing this? What are readers going to know or be able to do after reading this book or reading a few chapters? We hope you read the whole book, not just a few chapters, but hey, we know, you know, you can be pressed for time. But it was really communication from day one and then communication with the prospective authors. And then once authors signed on, making sure that they knew what was happening. <laughs> I loved how you would tell me, uh, Bridget, don't you think you need to send out an info, you know, a, a message to the ladies just to let them know where we are and stuff? Yes, son, I was going to do it in about two to three days, but I will do it today <laughs> since you have brought it up. But making sure everybody's on the same page, no pun intended, <laughs> making sure everyone's <laughs> on the same page and everybody always knows what's happening. And, you know, as you lead in your departments, at home, wherever, at your business, it's that transparency and making sure everybody understands that's where the trust comes through and truth is important is being transparent with your communication. That was the secret sauce, Simone. I mean, I'm just thinking about the, the different uh, partners with whom we had to work, whether it was a typesetter, whether it was an editor, whether it was a copywriter, whether it was a videographer or a, a video production team. It, it was just making sure that every single, the graphic designers, I'm just thinking about everybody. We were all working with a lot of moving parts and we all needed to constantly know what was happening and when was it happening and the why behind it. Communication, I, I can't say it any more loudly. Uh, that was the secret sauce. I love that. I think one of the, the nice things about the partnership that we formed for this book or the collaboration was innovation. I thought that we were able to bounce ideas and grow ideas, you know, just put a little seed there and then it would bloom to a flower based on the convert, like a tennis ball back and forth. Well, I think this, no, I think this, I think this. And so we, we danced back and forth until we got to a really good place. And, and I think, you know, additional legs to the project than when we initially started. So I think innovation was one of the things that we did really well. I think so too. And I'm glad you said innovation, Simone, because that's how the book came about. I even talk about this in the book. It was February of 2020, just before we were all, you know, having to go on lockdown and couldn't travel anywhere. A gentleman came out to Phoenix, which is the area in which I live. He and his wife were out for uh, spring, what, what's it called? Baseball, spring break, spring camp. Uh, why can't I think of it right now? But anyway, baseball enthusiasts, they know what I'm talking about. They come out to Phoenix and the major league baseball players are out doing their thing, getting ready for the season. Spring training. So spring training, yeah, spring break, spring something, springs in the air, loves in the air. And so he and his wife were out <laughs> and he and I had been conversing via email about the possibility of me speaking at an event where all of these women, go-getters, leaders, executives, you name it, comes together at this conference that he and his colleagues host in Kansas. And so as we're conversing via email, he says, wait a minute, 
I'm coming to Phoenix. You live in Phoenix. Let's, let's get together. As we get together and we're having a conversation, he's uh, telling me about these women that are going to be at this conference and I'm listening. And, and he's giving me some of their profiles. And I'm thinking, what can these ladies sound like they have their acts together? What, what can I bring to the stage? So I ask him, what is a challenge that they have? And he said that most of them feel like they are incredibly successful. They've got it together professionally. They've got it going on, but they feel like they're on islands by themselves where if they have a challenge in the leadership world, to whom do they go? If they are trying to figure something out, they, they feel like everybody comes to them for the answers. Where can they go for answers? Where can they get answers to their questions from other women who are in leadership roles, who have struggles, who have challenges, and where can they get advice? So I'm sitting there thinking, the wheels are turning. I immediately start doing my research. I start looking for a book that has real life accounts from real life women in real life leadership roles that give advice, that tell the world what they wish they had known, that give women some support and some real advice, not fluff, not pie in the sky, not theories that we can't understand to sound like they came from a textbook, but real advice. And I couldn't really find anything that fit the bill for, for based on that conversation I had with that gentleman. And so, hey, innovation, if it doesn't exist, then you fill that gap. And I immediately got on the horn with Simone and said, okay, Simone, here's a gap, here's a challenge. Let's do it, let's figure this out, right? <laughs> let's get to work. And as a matter of fact, one of our authors in the book, Sarah, uh, she's in uh, Illinois and her chapter is in the uh, third part of the book, it's in part three. And the title of her chapter is, fill a gap in your industry and run with it. And she, she talks about this incredible firm that she and her brother built. And then I think it was maybe in 2020, all of a sudden they noticed this gap in the industry. And so they, they branched out in another direction, but you see something's missing. You just dive in, innovate and make it happen. I love that. I'm actually thinking about the podcast that I'm doing, the other podcast, Inclusion School. That's what happened with Julie and I, where we saw a gap around educating children about the inclusion journey. And so we started a podcast together. So I love the idea of seeing the gap, honing in and saying, how do I get into this space? What can I do? How do I bring my voice into this space? And so I'm excited about the book. Bridget, tell people how they can get the book. Yes, go to www.theupwardbook.com. All common spelling, theupwardbook.com. You will actually see all of the ladies who are included in the book. You'll see all of the chapters and uh, make sure you get a copy, get a copy for yourself, get a copy for all of the ladies in your circle or send them to buy their own copy. Hey. <laughs> 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 the upwardbook.com. I love that. And I love the fact that it's coming out for Women's History Month. I think there is a significance of unleashing upward on that special day. Yes, uh, International Women's Day, March uh, 8th, 2021 is the official publication day. We're also having an author day that day where you get to uh, meet the ladies, if you will, virtually, social distancing, staying safe. So we are going to have several of the authors on Zoom that day. So when you go to the Upward Book, Dot com. You can also register for Author Day, where we are going to uh, meet from uh, 3 p.m. Eastern until 4.30 p.m. Eastern and just answer your questions and, and, and give you a sneak peek into these ladies' lives. Uh, we're going to unveil what the book is about, reveal some of the least talked about challenges for women in leadership positions. And then the ladies are also going to share some of their strategies for climbing the leadership ladder, no matter where you are in your journey. If you are just starting out, this is a fantastic book for 
young ladies who may be graduating from college or graduating from graduate degree programs and they are wanting to ascend through the ranks in corporate America or start their own businesses because a lot of the ladies, I, you know what, Simone, I should check and see what the data is on this. What percentage of the ladies are business owners and what percentage of them are employees? That's what's so fantastic about this book is it's not just focused on business owners, but also employees. So yes, Coming out International Women's Day, theupwardbook.com. Get your copy. You will not be disappointed. Yeah, and what I love is that you can actually pre-order the book. So the book is coming out the 8th, but you can actually get the book, get your order in now if you would like to by going to the Upward, right to the upwardbook.com website at a, a special rate. So we are excited to share this book with the world to support women on the leadership journey, those in the book, as well as those who are picking up the book to get career tips that will be useful to them. Any parting words as we begin to wrap up this bonus episode, Bridget? Right. I am so in love with the, the titles of the chapters they are, oh my goodness, they, they really pull you in. So one title of a chapter is from Lisa DeFalco, Silence the Critics to Create a Path Forward. <laughs> and you know, critics can be external voices and they can be internal voices. Sarah Jean Segredo Hammond, her title of her chapter is Be Quiet be still, then roar. I, I, I mean, I love, love, love these chapters. Danielle Hansen's chapter is never stay in a place where no one sees your value. Man, oh man, I wish I could have read that chapter right out of college. <laughs> Hello. Jackie, St Jackie Stallings Evans's chapter. I fell in love with this one. When you play small, you're not serving the world. You've got to get in the big leagues and get in that driver's seat. Tina Fry Clements, you become what you think about all day. Step back for a second. As a leader, as a go-getter, as someone wanting to take control of your career, and what is it that you're thinking about all day? It's mindset. And if you think to yourself, I've got this, if you think to yourself, I'm owning this, if you think to yourself, I can make this happen, then all of that is going to manifest itself. Another one, take a seat at the table to focus on high profile tasks. That one's by Kate Fitzgerald. She and I used to work together at an educational technology company. And Kate has moved and shaked and baked and done a lot of fantastic things. And I've just been so excited to watch her. But I love how in her chapter, she talks about don't do little things that are not going to get you where you need to be. Yes, small details matter and small tasks matter. But ask yourself with every little task that you do, is it getting me where I want to be? I'm not going to read all of them to you. But those, oh, this one, Shante R. Roddy. Show up boldly, confidently, and unapologetically. Esther Renee, reign your lane. Uh, mm -hmm. These are one. all great titles, Bridget. Love, love, yes. love it. It's such a nice sneak. Yes, piece. yes. And I know you asked for parting words. You know how I am, Simone. I was a toxic <laughs> too much kid in elementary school. Here's my last one. My last one is by Noeli. Noeli Sanchez Velez. Leadership is more than a job title. You do not have to have the title of CEO or be anywhere in the C-suite or vice president. Any job title you have can be a leadership role. Take that and own that. All right, I'm shutting up, Smo. <laughs> no, these are all these are all great, um, in, inspiring stories that I think our audience will benefit from globally. And so, we are excited to share this compilation with the world. And I love, love, love the title. And oftentimes I will send Bridget a message or sign off with, 
upwards we go. And so upwards we go or upward we go in this wonderful leadership compilation book. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. No, I was just going to say absolutely, Simone. Thank you so much for taking the journey with me. And a huge thank you to all of the ladies who contributed their chapters, contributed their very personal stories and challenges, and most importantly, the advice that they give. It's invaluable. Get your copy of Upward Leadership Lessons for Women on the Rise at theupwardbook.com. Thank you, Simone. Wonderful, wonderful. And so exciting is that some of the women from Upward will be on the podcast. So you'll be able to dive a bit deeper into their stories. So keep listening to the podcast, pick up the Upward book, come and join us virtually on the author's day. And it's going to be a great time. So thank you, Bridget, for being on the show again. It's been a pleasure to have you on this bonus episode of the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this week's empowering career story on the podcast. If you did, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Wherever you listen to the podcast, be sure that you are subscribing and that you rate and review the podcast. It's so important as we continue to spread the word of career empowerment. In addition, you can head over to the LinkedIn platform and join the Power of Owning Your Career discussion group. There you can have access to the guests who have been on the podcast, as well as others listening to the podcast, as well as myself, where we can continue the conversation. I hope to see you on that platform. You can also email me at pooyc at simonemorris.com if you have a suggestion for guests or a message that you want me to hear personally. Thanks so much and make it an inspiring, empowering week in your career.